quite a bit of time on on uh, x squared, and then and then uh, less time on x cubed, and then and now we're looking at functions as as classes, and try to see a pattern not in a one single function like this. This is the this is a symmetry of of the cubic function. Uh, very very nice symmetry. You can you can see how it goes goes up. You can see the uh, central symmetry and so on. We we don't we cannot cannot afford that anymore. So we are moving on to uh, when we're moving to uh, uh, to functions uh, of uh, a whole class of functions. Okay, and, the, and then we can see we can see try to see patterns here. So uh, and the uh, so we we got a bunch of power functions right away, uh, and and the, the patterns that starts to uh, appear here, and the pattern is um, uh, the, the pattern is uh, symmetry, and uh, uh, as well as the uh, general direction of the of the function. So, so whether the values are growing, period, uh, that these are the odd powered functions, uh, odd powered, odd degree powers. So these are called degrees. This is still one over here, so it still applies. So degrees are uh, one, two, three, four, five. And odd degrees give, give us the general direction uh, uh, from left bottom to top right. Uh, so it's keep growing in the nonstop. Uh, even though you can you can say that if you look go back to x cubed, you can see that it kind of stops for a moment, almost for an instant it stops growing. But but in reality, it's still uh, the growth uh, continues nonstop. Uh, same with uh, all the uh, rest of the odd uh, odd powers, and then uh, the even powers are different because they go down and then up. With the uh, this kind of a, a bottom 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 um, um, minimum minimum point. Okay, so now we're switching to, so uh, like I said, it's all whole class of functions and they continue nonstop, so we have to see a general pattern and then that best we can do is, is just to, uh, to use that. Um, and, then, and then we flip them over uh, and uh, look at their reciprocal powers. So they're, also, they're known as negative powers, uh, x minus 1. So it's, these are still powers, but we're switching from positive powers to negative powers. Okay, so but reciprocals are certainly um, um, that, that that's what it means. So the negative power means division. Remember that, right? So so uh, so then uh, you you can easily then uh, recycle the now our knowledge about the uh, functions of, about positive powers these uh, in order to compute reciprocal powers. Well, because you, how do you do it? You just take the reciprocal of of a function, so of of one of those. So for example, I take x cubed. And then I take reciprocal, say input is x, y, and then I take 1 over y. Okay, and here, here I have my 1 over x cubed. So the diagram on the left is 1 over x cubed. Okay, so, so, uh, so in other words, uh, I add an extra step. Uh, computer, if I know how to compute x cubed, then I just take, take it upside, turn it upside down, I have a new function. Okay, uh, and then uh, some of the patterns that we see will really reappear uh, among the reciprocal, pow uh, reciprocal powers. And those reciprocal powers are, uh, the, the main thing will be, as you can see, the domain. So every time uh, my function over here at the, at the top list crosses the x-axis. Okay, so if this is my x-axis. Okay, so what effect does it have on the, on the new function? Uh, the effect is division by zero. Crossing x-axis meaning that y is equal to zero. Remember that that's what the x-axis is. The equation, the equation of the x-axis is y is equal to zero. So every time you hit the x-axis, that's what you see on the graph. But in in reality, uh, the actual function the uh, gives you zero output. Whatever the input is, wherever you're crossing it, uh, that's the input. The output is zero. Okay. So so when you, if you take your reciprocal over here, uh, there will be trouble because you divide by zero. So we have to throw that that value x out, which in, in this fairly simple um, environment, uh, there's only one, one value that will produce division by zero, so that is zero, and that's where we are. We exclude zero from the domain of, of uh, our new function, specifically 10x, if you want to start with that. And this is where we are uh, right now. Um, so we have a little table of values 10x on the left. Okay, so the pattern starts to uh, to appear. So we have uh, on the left, we have uh, if we have our integers, we have on the left, then on the right, we have uh, the reciprocal. Okay, so if I just plot those six points, uh, you can see them, they're that pink, 
uh, purple and orange. Uh, so the, uh, the, they pair up again, just like, uh, just like uh, those, those odd powers. Remember uh, the sign, the, if you, you progress left, right, and right, left, uh, you are hitting the same values only the, with opposite, opposite signs, which tells you something about the symmetry, right? What's, what's the symmetry? Either judging by the numbers or judging by the curves, what's the symmetry? It is once again the rotation or central uh, central symmetry um, of, uh, of of what uh, of uh, of uh, say uh, x x cubed x fifth all of the odd powered or all odd degree powers have uh, central symmetry or rotational I don't want to say rotational symmetry because it's about uh, rotation then you have to say it's rotation 180 degree symmetry it's a little bit long uh, and central symmetry is uh, uh, even though it's slightly hard to imagine. Um, it is. It has certain advantages because, uh, well, central symmetry. Also, you can think of. Uh, you can see it in three-dimensional situations as well. Central symmetry, even though there is no rotation. So, for example, a sphere, or or the Earth, or the globe has a central symmetry. So, so we have a point opposite on the other side of the of the uh, Earth, uh, which is well, a symmetric point. And every point, wherever you are, there is another point on the other side symmetric relative to the center of the Earth. So, that, so that's the symmetric symmetry, sim, s central symmetry, even though there is no rotation. Okay, so you cannot, you cannot rotate, well, I, I, I try to imagine, try to imagine if you can, uh, uh, you can certainly rotate a circle 180 degrees, okay, so that's, that's the, uh, the, what happens in, on the plane, but if you go to 3D, rotations are, are not as, as, uh, as powerful anymore, and you cannot rotate yourself into and even if you can, you know, imagine that you can rotate the Earth, you cannot rotate all points to their antipodal, antipodal points. Okay, so, well, because once you start to rotate, then there will be one point that's not moving on the axis. So you, you choose the axis of rotation, and then, then, you, then it means that some of the points will not go anywhere. Okay, so you cannot, you cannot reduce central, central symmetry to rotation uh, outside dimension two. Okay, so, so the concept of central symmetry is preferable in that sense. So maybe it will come up later. Uh, at this point, we'll just say central symmetry, remembering that once again, either you um, um, either you do the um, um, what um, uh, paint, as we did last time, you, there is a 100, 100 degrees turn uh, operation. Okay. So, uh, or, or you just, uh, um, you can literally think of a piece of paper and you rotate it like this. Uh, but uh, remember, central symmetry is uh, is uh, is actually quite uh, quite visible in this picture because they they paired up. You can see how the orange point paired up with the other orange point. How across zero across the origin like this, and the purple one is also paired up across the center. So that is the the idea of central symmetry. Okay. Uh, so it is, it is, it is uh, visible once once you get used to it. You will, you will see that that symmetry everywhere, just like just as a, as a mirror image, mirror mirror uh, symmetry. Okay, so uh, six points uh, symmetric. Uh, then we realize that these are six points are not enough to actually get a good good grip, a good idea of what the graph looks like. So we started getting more points, uh, and it suffices just to get one or two. But where do you put them? You don't want to go on to the left or to the right because the pattern seems to be to 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 have uh, to have become clear, right? So uh, so as you can see, if we move to the left, it will be keep going down, down, down. Okay. That, that's the pattern. And same to the left. If we start moving x starts moving to the left, what's going to happen? Uh, imagine just uh, well the, the values are already did here, right here. So the pattern is right here. So uh, as as x is grow one by one, the reciprocals all those numbers will be getting smaller and smaller. Okay. So so the pattern will be flattening out, approaching uh, the x-axis, okay, on the left or on the right. So that, that pattern becomes very quickly uh, clear. The other one is, uh, however, is closer to the hole in the domain. The hole in the domain, that's, that's what creates uh, trouble here and we have to worry about. So this is the hole. I, I try to actually literally put a hole there, a hole in the domain. So the domain is on the x-axis and this is its hole. Let me maybe plot the domain again. 
So the, the, the uh, green one is the demi. Okay, so uh, so it is at closer to that uh, point is that where, where things start to become interesting, and it, it is uh, uh, so. Then we have to insert values in the middle over here. So that's what I started doing last time, inserting values between uh, between uh, say one and and uh, and zero to to recognize the pattern. And so I inserted one half, and the reciprocal one half is two, and so I have a new point, red point over there. Okay, so as you can see, we start climbing. So if I insert one more, say I insert here point uh, x x equal uh, one th uh, one third. Okay, cl yet closer to the uh, to the origin, uh, the um, the output will be uh, will be three. Okay, so you you can see the climbing. So when if the number is growing, the reciprocals are declining. When the number is declining, the reciprocal is growing. Okay, so that's what we're seeing on the right. And so I have one more point. Um, well, let's take this this color. One third. One third. One third in, in three. So the point would be here somewhere. And there is one. Once again, based on our symmetry, there is another point at the other end. Like this. Okay, so then they start to link up into something uh, coherent like this. Okay. Um, uh, there's a name for it. It's called a hyperbola. Uh, so the, the pattern is uh, is to be still to be discussed. The, these uh, uh, descriptions that I gave for the behavior. Um, Along the x-axis, what's happening of, as we move forward to along the x-axis, or whatever's happening along the y-axis, uh, they're very similar. Uh, and uh, well, actually, actually, so in addition, since since we uh, it came up, uh, the central symmetry is still there. You see those those lines that go through the uh, through the origin. There is another there is another symmetry. Can you see another symmetry? The rotation of 100 degrees, something entirely different. Uh, there, is a, there is a mirror symmetry. It would be along y parallel. Yep. Along y equals x, so like. Like this. Yeah. Right. That's right. So that's another mirror. If you put a mirror, Diagonally, then uh, you see you will see your graph uh, in the mirror again. Okay, so so in addition to uh, central symmetry, it has a mirror symmetry. In, in addition, uh, which um, x cubed did not have. Okay, so uh, so that that's we, we see extra extra thing. Uh, but on the other hand, um, uh, so x and one of x have uh, an extra mirror, mirror symmetry. Okay, so just uh, uh, another thing uh, to recognize. So also uh, hyperbolas. Uh, this is what they look like. You see the hole in the in the domain. You can see that no matter how close you get to uh, to to that hole to to zero, the you will never get to the y-axis because the value will, will keep growing and growing, and, and uh, you will never you will never get there. Um, so that that's one thing to see. Another thing to see is uh, once again what we recognize: there are not, no corners, there are no cusps, there are no uh, flat areas anywhere. So once again, the slopes change, vary everywhere. Okay, uh, the uh, the increasing decreasing pattern also is there. Uh, what is the what is that pattern? What do you see here? What what's happening to the values of y? If x is increasing, what's happening to, y, to the values of y? That's right. So x is increasing, y is decreasing. Uh, just as long as you stick uh, uh, within the two halves of the of the domain. So either you stay negative infinity is zero, or you stay within zero infinity. Okay, then. You have two branches, so you, you probably better idea to look at them separately because of their 
literally, unlike those branches that we have seen before, they were linked. They are, there was a point between them. Okay, so it was one branch, even though we spoke of the different branches, but it was the same same piece, well, like like a rope, one piece of rope. Now we have two two pieces. Okay, they are totally unrelated to each other, and they, as you can see, the behavior is is a bit weird uh, in the sense of uh, you can clearly see how y is going down, right? And on the left, and then you can see on the right the y is also going down. But as a result, as you can see, if I if I jump from uh, x uh, x equal negative one to x equal one, what happens? What happens to y? It increases. So y was ne uh, negative one and becomes y equal one. So so even though everywhere we can look at the the graph is going down, the slopes are down, and the uh, y is literally decreasing as x is increasing. However, this what can happen if we allow ourselves ju jump over the hole in the domain. So suddenly the behavior is the opposite. The y goes up. So so that that's the lesson for for the future that uh, the, the domains is better to think about domains as they are made up of intervals and. Uh, if a, a point is missing, then uh, you, 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 the behavior might, might be, that it exhibits might be, might be strange. Okay, so um, uh, let me. Um, so the rest. What about the rest of the, of the, uh, of the reciprocal powers? Uh, so uh, you can guess. Can you guess anything about uh, the rest of the reciprocal powers based based on this? What the one O X looks like. So one O X is this one, what we just uh, took care of. This one. Uh, what do you think a uh, graph might look similar to it? Negative third, can you explain why? Yeah, all odd powers. So odd powers, just like uh, with when they are not, when not reciprocal, uh, we had a pattern of behavior among uh, odd powers. They go like this, all like this. One, three, five, they behave like this, go up. Uh, hit zero in the middle, and then uh, so that the result when you flip it, uh, the pattern will produce uh, the pattern produced will be this. So going down and going down on the other side. The only difference will be just as with the uh, with the um, uh, with the power functions, the difference will lie in the uh, in the uh, how fast it's going. So uh, the function is changing, and they are not. Uh, let me find that picture that. Uh, that we had last time. So the uh, remember the six the six functions of the uh, the six 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 power functions. Okay, so let me just show you that those uh, uh, pictures again. Uh, so uh, and then we flip them, and the pattern will continue, uh, except it will be um, uh, it will be what uh, it will be uh, there will be hole, and instead of uh, uh, like a, a parabola like curves. For uh, even even numbered uh, even 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 powers, they will be hyperbola-like curves. Okay, so uh, so where are these? Are? Okay, so these are my my powers. Okay, odd and even. And then when you flip it uh, flip it around, uh, the uh, well, think about this. If you have a positive function on the on at the bottom, when you take its reciprocal, it will be still positive. Okay, so that means that the, the those powers will look very very different from from uh, the one ones on top. So the, if you if you take the reciprocal of one uh, one three and five, they will still have uh, go from positive to negative exactly what we just saw, and uh, and very different from from positive powers. So so this is the picture of of what actually happens. They, these are the two uh, the th uh, four uh, four reciprocals. Uh, two odd and two even. Negative one, negative negative one. We just plot it. As you can see, though, there are these two nice hyperbolas. Uh, what happens? Negative three is very similar, and you can see the difference is flatter. It is even it, while uh, one OX, uh, the very first one, has this nice uh, curve. What happens to one OX cubed? Uh, it goes down really fast and then goes virtually horizontal. Also, very well. It's not going anywhere. It's going very flat. That's the second branch of the. Um, is this big enough for you? Okay, so you see how it is over here. It is very, very over here. It is very, very flat. So that's over one of x cubed. Well, one while you go with highest power, it be, becomes even flatter. 
very vertical, very horizontal. This is kind of behavior these functions uh, exhibit because the function of the, the values grow so fast and then the reciprocal of a number becomes, goes to zero uh, extremely fast. And you can see the difference of, of the odd and even powers. Once again, uh, even power is always positive, so both of the hyperbolas are above the x-axis. Okay. So, uh, so that's best we can do with these curves. Uh, so just uh, um, uh, little by little, we'll learn more and more and more about them. But this is a bird's eye view of what we, 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 can, we can see just uh, uh, with a quick overview and then try to uh, think in an analogy and see a pattern of into, into, the, uh, into, uh, into the future, into the higher powers, what, what can happen. Um, as you can see, so they roughly remains the same, only kind of more extreme. Okay, so that's that's what we're supposed to see in uh, in in these pictures. About the same, more extreme. And and uh, the symmetry are gone, by the way. Um, there are there are some of the symmetry, so you you can still see the central symmetry in the first row. You can still see mirror image mirror uh, symmetry in the second row. Uh, that symmetry just I just came, we came up with just a minute ago. It's not there anymore. So this kind of symmetry is not present anymore. Um, I'm not sure if it is visible. Can you see it? Can you see that uh, uh, if you look at uh, negative three, the second top, uh, and maybe it's not quite clear that, but it does not have the the, uh, the, the diagonal symmetry anymore um, uh, because um, um, how should I explain it? Well, it, it just doesn't align anymore. We'll we'll look into that later if, we, if there's time. So, so anyway, so that's, uh, that's roughly where we are. Uh, what we have missed in all these analyses, or all of these functions, is the opposite of the domain. What's the opposite of the domain? Core domain, yes, but the, we have assumed, we have assumed, uh, in all of these functions, we assume that, uh, uh, so domain is uh, either negative infinity plus infinity for uh, x, x squared, x cubed, okay? And then we and the um, domain is uh, negative infinity zero zero infinity for the reciprocals, but the codomain is uh, uh, is easy. Remember how we we chose this, this is by the way is not just domain it's the implied domain, which means that we pick the largest possible domain. Okay, so so we had to. We had to throw out zero because we cannot possibly use it for, for the reciprocals. So that, that's why we ended up with a smaller domain than originally. But these are the largest ones. Okay, so that's what implied means, the largest possible. Then uh, um, what about codomain? Once again, what is the largest one? And the, uh, the answer is it's, it's simply the whole thing once again, negative infinity. Infinity doesn't matter what's happening. You could you just include for your own convenience the largest possible codomain for uh, so that uh, you 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 are sure that you're not going to miss it. Um, and you're not going to miss anything. If you try to make make something small without without prior consideration, you might uh, realize that you end up with an output which is not in, listed on the codomain. So to avoid this problem, uh, you can just uh, go straight ahead and say, well, the codomain is everything. Okay, but there is another uh, issue related, and that is uh, the so-called range. So we progress from codomain to the range, and this one is not the largest possible. So the codomain is the uh, largest possible set of outputs. Okay, the range is the smallest, not the smallest. It is the set of outputs. The set of all outputs. Uh, so let me just uh, quickly start with the uh, uh, what we just have been doing so I can quickly illustrate uh, what I'm talking about. Um, uh, this is the function that uh, uh, has has a property it misses a point in the in the domain at a zero. It is also missing one of the values that what values cannot possibly can it possibly take? 1 of x. What output is impossible? It is zero is impossible. So that's that's the observation that we take uh, for us uh, as a starting point. So f of x is equal to one over x. Uh, 
the so it's y output y equals zero is impossible. Okay, so well, first of all, y it's it's really not that hard. You just uh, you just write one of x is equal to zero and try to solve uh, solve this equation for x, and then what you discover is that indeed there is no solution. Okay, because you cannot have zero on the left. So you divide one by any number, you will never get you will never get zero. Uh, you can see it on the graph. Uh, how can you see it on the graph? It is what? Uh, the, 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 yeah, yeah, I'd say yes. Uh, the, the graph, what are, you, what are you saying? It never touches the x-axis. Yeah. Right. So, so let me plot the graph like this. So then you see both of the statements that we have here. So uh, let me let me circle them. The one that we just discovered, uh, output y equals zero is impossible. But let me pair it up with another one from before, input x equals zero is impossible. Okay, so these two statements are, well, let me make it three. Okay, these two statements are paired up. Uh, one about the input, the other one about the output, uh, and uh, both of them are, well, we, we, the, the first one we, we knew for a while, right? Uh, so you cannot plug in zero into one of x, and otherwise you have, you're in trouble, but it turns out that we have extra extra piece of information here that certain outputs are also impossible. So let's see that in the graph. Where do we see that in the graph? So as it was just <clears throat> explained that uh, uh, y, uh, the answer is uh, the graph doesn't uh, cross the x-axis. Okay? It never crosses the x-axis no matter what I, on the left looks like it may, maybe. But it never does. Oops. Like this. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, but then you can you can turn it uh, um, uh, turn it around. And the original statement over there, uh, uh, y x is not uh, possible as the input. The answer is about the same. Uh, if you want to speak graphically, so rather than in terms of algebra, you can you can see that statement as well. So how do you explain based on the graph y? x equals zero is not a possible input. What do you, can you say about the graph that would produce that? X cannot be the input. X equals zero cannot be the input. Why not? Based on the graph. That's right. The, the graph does not cross uh, uh, the y axis. So that's the explanation. So, so uh, indeed, these two straight lines never touched by by the graph, and that's why there is a uh, there is a uh, the, the, this line is y equals zero. I'm sorry, this is x equals zero. The the uh, uh, the y axis is x equals zero. Okay, and then uh, the x axis is y equals zero. Okay, so both of them are these are impossible. And so that's the symmetry between between the uh, domain and the range. Not domain and codomain, but domain and range. Okay, so the range is uh, the once again the set of all uh, possible outputs that we have to exclude now. So the domain then what we have conclusion uh, have concluded that the the range of y equal one over x is F, well, y, so that's that's the difference. We're talking about y's now. So when we we speak of, of domain, we speak of x's, and now it's a range. It's about y's, the outputs. So y not equal to zero. Okay. There you go. Okay. Uh, so I'll get, I'll get back to to the numerical functions in a minute, but let me uh, take a quick look at at the. Uh, this picture that remember we started with uh, are functions defined by 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 arrows be between sets that are abstract. 
So we have an abstract set of, of, of uh, boys on the left and, and balls on the right. Uh, five here, five uh, for four there. Okay, x on the left, y on the right, f, f, uh, uh, y is my, my function. So, uh, okay, so just examining these arrows, we can answer the same question that we, we have been trying to answer uh, easily, easier than with numbers. So there are no graphs here. Uh, the input's on the left, the corresponding output is, is on the right, uh, but we can just uh, look at that and, uh, and tell what, uh, what's going on. So, uh, what is the domain? Um, whoop, that is really big. That's not pretty. Uh, the domain is, uh, is x. Uh, why domain is x? Because there is an arrow starting at every single uh, person on the left. Okay, so if there is, that, that's, that indicates that every, every one. Let's see if my pen works. Um, so as I was saying, uh, the, um, the, no, the thing is not working yet. Okay, all right. Okay, so once again, I'm marking here that every person is in the domain. So domain is, uh, once again, everything is the whole x. Okay, so, um, this one. Okay, so uh, so l let me let me circle it. Let me circle it. So this is my domain. Okay, but now the range. Range. So all outputs. So what can you say about the the range? Once again, see where, what objects on the right have arrows arriving there. So what do you see? Yeah, there, there, there are two arrows arriving here, one arrow arriving there, two arrows arriving there. So what's the conclusion? There are three. So, so all but, but three. Well, baseball. So then if I want to now uh, circle the range, I will do it this way. So once again, why is the whole thing? So that's why they don't confuse it with, with the range. But this is the range. Well, I shouldn't probably use, use red. Let me use the different color. So y is this. This is my y. It includes everything. This is the y is the codomain. It is, uh, it is when I move on to, to the range and look at, I have to exclude the, uh, the, the baseball number three. So this is the range. Okay. So I could even do it like this. Let me sure. Uh, like this. Okay. Okay, so uh, once again, domain on the left includes everybody, and on the right I have my codomain that includes everybody too. But then, if I, I take a more careful look at what what can or cannot happen with the with my uh, uh, with the outputs, turns out that I ca I cannot include baseball, which means that there are only three elements in the in the uh, <coughs> in the range. Okay, so let's uh, uh, let's now. We uh, take another look at, at the list of functions that I guess we have time for a couple of uh, more examples. Uh, look at the functions that we just just saw. And uh, uh, well, let me just plot, plot them so that we wouldn't waste our time. Uh, okay, so uh, there, there will be like four uh, classes and uh, of those, those functions that we have seen so far. And uh, uh, okay, so x squared, as an example, all even powers, all odd powers. Uh, the reciprocal even power look like this. And the reciprocal odd power looks like that. Okay, so let's quickly identify the, uh, the, the ranges. 
Okay, so what is the range of x squared? What is the range of x squared? No. Look carefully. Well, possible answers, possible uh, outputs uh, is negative one, a possible output of x squared. No. Okay. Negative two, negative, negative one, negative three, negative three. All of these are not possible outputs. And how, how do you see that they aren't based on the graph rather than just number? You know that you square a number, you can never get a negative number. So that's how you know algebraically that these are excluded. But you can see there also on the graph, you can see that uh, uh, you are never going to, you know, how, how do I see that these are not included? I take my graph and push it towards the y-axis. Okay, so if I do that, this is what I end up with. I end up with this, including the bottom point. Okay, so now if I go to x cube and do the same, once again, I try, I take my graph and push it out onto the x-axis, what do I see? It does include everything, right, like this. So literally, um, I'm not sure what, uh, so let's, let's stick with that metaphor for now. Uh, once again, taking as if it's on a piece of paper, there's a, a rope on a piece of paper and you just push it towards the x-axis terribly in a horizontal manner. Then as you can see, you'll never get, you'll never get anything below the x-axis on the left and on the right, you'll see, you'll get everything. Okay, one of x squared, same thing. Are they two ropes pushed to the, to, to the center? What do you get? Well, uh, you cannot get negative numbers again because it's x squared. Uh, so it's almost like the, the one above, except you have to exclude zero because you cannot get zero. We just talked about it. And finally, uh, one of x cubed, you push these together, what do you get? Everything but zero. Everything but zero, that's right. Okay, so we'll resume next week then.